So hi everyone, today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Onkar with us. So Onkar, would you like to introduce yourself once? Yeah, hi. So myself Onkar. I am currently a software engineer at Google. Previously, I worked at Dick Morgan Chase. And yeah, this is the second time on my channel. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So previously, we talked about his JP Morgan process and interview experience. And recently, only he cracked Google, right, which is pretty much the dream company of everyone. And in this video, we'll be getting to know his journey to cracking Google, his interview experience, the process, the preparation, and everything in between. So, Onkar, would you like to start us off with your interview experience? Like, what was the process like? What all happened in each of the rounds? Yeah, sure. So, on the first, uh, a recruiter reached out to me. So, that was like, are you interested for this job? After uh, that, it's really your screening round. That is your phone screening round. So, the name of the round is phone screening, but it's not actually on. It's properly an interview on uh, like you, you give it on your Google Meet. So this is a knockout round. So this is round to check if you are worth uh, scheduling the main BSA, the main coding rounds. So yeah, the level of this, this pretty much to medium, I would say. And even if the hard questions come, you are not expected here to give the straight up give my solution. Even if you are able to give a brute force solution, that also fine. Giving the brute force solution and coding that matters. So before that, interviewer will ask you like sufficient, like you can ask for two weeks. I would suggest uh, like uh, getting two to three weeks is decent enough. If you take more than that, that then it becomes like it, it is not that worthy. So yeah, so during that, uh, like when the round gets scheduled, you uh, interviewer asks you your preferred coding language and then you can uh, say like anything like C++, Java. To me, it was personally C++. So you get two weeks of import preparation. You have to code on the course on the Google Docs where you don't have any ID support or suggestions. Yeah. So the code quality matters here in this round. So uh, to focus on your code quality, uh, focus on communicating your approach, like whatever you are thinking, think it out loud. Like you have to show that you are able to code and you are able to think an algorithm for it. Not, sure, uh, not necessary that you give, give right away the optimal solution. Because this is just a screening round. Uh, mostly, like 90% of the time, it will be a lead code medium. But even if it lead code hard, yeah, don't worry that you will have to figure it out. If you think out loud, then uh, interviewer knows that what exactly or which part you are in this appropriate hints from him or her. So, yeah, so this is your screening round. After the screening round, within a week, uh, I got the response, a positive feedback, and I got my main uh, coding rounds skin. So these are three BSA rounds, one after the other. Not necessarily on one day, like uh, you have to get uh, recruiter shares a calendar with you and you have to share your uh, availability because yeah, as I was a working professional, so I have to So yeah, so yeah, for that also, like I had a two weeks for the first round and then I tried to wrap up my all the three rounds in the same week. Like uh, I had a one day of a gap uh, for each round and yeah. So yeah, for the level of this round is like high from the previous round, like previous rounds, as I said, that was staying around this. So here you can expect a decent lead code hard or a lead code medium. If it is a lead code medium, then uh, you for sure they will ask you a follow-up. So, yeah, it's like a medium round, you will be able to solve it, you try run it, and then be prepared that the follow-up is coming up. One of the trap here, here is that most of people uh, see that there is a lead code medium question, they get super excited, super happy. But they solve it by taking their own time. So you have to you have to like do a subtle judgment here that okay, this is a very simple question. This can't be so simple. So he is just warming up. So let me finish it fast, and <laughs> then the follow up is coming up. So you have to prepare the for that problem. follow up, the real problem. Yeah, like people get happy, excited, and they take their own time, thinking that I just pass the time. If I pass the time, because I didn't know the solution. So that's a trap here. Like so, you have to like hmm. understand the. Uh, of the problem that actually what it is solved like uh, if the problem hmm. is getting lengthy what happens so yeah so i can't exactly reveal the questions but yeah i can tell you the topics so for the screening round uh it was a question on stacks and queues basically stock exchange like then coming to my main dsa rounds round i think i uh, it was that uh, based on dynamic programming second coding round it was on uh, backpacking it was recursion backtracking, then a follow up came up, which I saw using maths. Like it was a pure mathematical based question. And mm. the third round was on graphs. So it was a mm. combination of graphs and geometry. Mm. 
all right understood and uh, you know like you said ki the topics like you said are pretty difficult you know they ask the most difficult topic and none of the questions that come in google rounds are obviously standard questions that you might have seen before right like obviously they have their own question bank they make their own problems and uh, not only it is difficult but it is new also so i just want to know how did you come to a level that you were able to clear all of those problems because a lot of people start dsa a lot of people do dsa but hardly very few of them are able to come to a certain level that are able to solve lead code hard problem or lead code medium hard problem so what was your dsa journey like that you were able to you know reach that level so i have been doing dsa from my college time itself like i had i was pretty consistent like during the covid covid years and also in my final year at till my final exams i was pretty consistent I was still trying i had a job offer from the teams but i was still trying off campus opportunities but yeah that was like a bad path as you know this session but yeah living apart that i was like i had done that famous uh, sheets that what we, we all know like sheet uh, that is very well famous so that was the one thing but, like doing that shit gives me like brief of the patterns like these are the patterns that exist and i have to like come up like i, I have to just identify like should able to identify that at which this which pattern will so that is individual to individual that depends like some people take 50 problems to reach at that level some people take 100 problems so yeah i just kept on like i uh, used to give the contest as well so contest is a good way to test yourself on the new problems problems which are not yet uh, like those are not standard problems but yeah you are able to think ki, yeah, you are able to identify the pattern and the next thing which i did during this uh, journey was like uh, when my interviews were scheduled and i tried to give mock interviews so mock interviews really help because it's like actual uh, uh, what you can say environment is prepared and you 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 try to come up with a solution that pressure so i had a couple of mock interviews i think i gave two mock interviews before my phone so that helped me uh, calm down the pressure like i did this phase two, two rounds so like it was my third round my phone screening round was i think like virtually i think it's my third round so that really mm. helped helped me hmm right 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 so no going a bit more into this because obviously dsa is pretty much the most important part of cracking a company like google right which you were able to do so a lot of people solve problems a lot of people give contests but yet what happens to them is whenever they come across a problem that they have let's say solved before or they know that this is going to be a stack problem or a queue problem then they're able to solve it but whenever a new problem comes then they have issue in that you know either during a contest or during a interview so like how did you overcome that barrier that even if a new problem comes you're able to recognize ki okay i have to use recursion and this is how i make i'm going to solve it for new problems so yeah i see the, see that as a like i have a toolbox like for me what i have done is like i prepared my own sheet like as i said i was missing from my college days so whatever problems i saw in our like i found that this problem is pretty interesting i i really learned something new pattern from it like a two three algorithm combination has been used or two three data structures combination is i just saved saved that problem those are like problems from the famous sheets out and some personally which i have just randomly found on daily challenges contest and i used to revisit those problems and revisiting those problems like i was able to think ki am i able to recall the solution exactly what process what made me think that this particular pattern was used if i am watching the explanation of the problem na so there i get the, even in the lead code discuss section they give you the intuition like how you get the intuition and how you reach to the solution so if you are able to link that if you are able to write down those things then your confidence increases for me to increase my confidence i revisited my uh, old problems like i just try to solve it. i know i have solved this problem but let me see if i can solve it for some time so i used to revisit as increase my pro- uh, confidence and once that confidence increase like yeah i am to re- recall so that new problems also becomes easy like just to see that i have some fixed some patterns i know this set, fixed set of some fixed set of data structures so that is my toolbox so using that toolbox what permutation and combination i can think of to solve that problem that's what i used to think like these are my tools this algorithm, algorithm is my one of my tool yeah, stacks queue is this is my tool does it fit here just trial so first it takes time consuming like you have to be resilient on this the resilience is the keyword because yeah it's first day take you to try you fail hmm. so eventually you will hmm. be there 
Mm, that's amazing man and i think uh, i i don't think i totally agree with that because you know unless you have you have to do a little bit of revision to come into that pattern recognition yes. ability right if you don't do revision if you just solve a problem and forget about it then that will that's what will yeah, happen you'll forget about the pattern as well right? yeah. rather than solving 50 new problems i would suggest ki revisit those old 25 problems but make sure that you know those problems in and out i'm not saying that you by heart the problems by harding is another thing you know the intuition that how the solution of that problem like what thinking steps was taken that you reached in this approach so that if thinking is clear then then that really helps that that's what helped me hmm correct correct that's amazing all right so we've discussed about the interview process we've discussed about your dsa journey so on a final note because obviously everyone who's watching this video wants to crack google so any final piece of advice you'd like to give them yeah so pretty much like yeah dsa and your communication skills matter like yeah so the last round for clearing all the three dsa rounds is a googliness round as well so let me talk on that also so on this round this is particularly uh, like the uh, hr round you can say leadership round where you are have been asked situation based questions on what you will this so this is a decent round like so pretty, pretty simple round you are clearing those three dsa rounds and this is a cake walk for you yeah and to the advice yeah that's what like i would say ki uh, first of all you have to be good in dsa for that you know what like person to person differs i told you my experience but uh, the major hur- hurdle here is even if people are good at dsa na, they are not able to convey their thinking so you have to practice that how you explain algorithm like if you are able to explain it in a good way na that that really matters because that interviewer want to know that what's your thought behind it so practice giving mock interviews or practice with peer friends i used to like do it in my college and like we had a group of people so i used to explain what my approach was they used to explain their approach so yeah so that right choice of words during explanation of an algorithm that matters so doing that then you are then you should able to dry run the solution dry run your solution dry run your approach so yeah So submitting just a lead code problem is not enough. Whenever you submit a lead code problem, sit back, give it a thought that uh, if this problem was uh, was asked in interview, how would I say about that problem? How would I explain that problem to the interviewer? So that's one of the advice I would say. And this is your consistency. Like you have to be consistent. You have to be in that phase, that interview giving phase or problem solving phase. Hmm. एक डेडिकेशन के बिना तो नहीं हो पाएगा चाहे कितने भी ट्रिक्स और टिप्स ले लो दैट कंसिस्टेंसी इज वेरी वेल नीडेड सो राइट दैट्स सम ग्रेट एडवाइस राइट देयर एंड आई थिंक दैट इज समथिंग दैट डेफिनेटली एवरीवन शुड फॉलो इफ यू वांट टू क्रैक गूगल इफ यू वांट टू क्रैक फैंग कंपनी यू नो दिस इज द वे टू मास्टर डीएसए एंड अलोंग विद दैट कंसिस्टेंसी विल हेल्प यू अचीव ग्रेट हाइट्स सो थैंक्स लॉट ओंका फॉर कमिंग ऑन द चैनल एंड शेयरिंग दीस वंडरफुल टिप्स एंड आई हैव गिवन इट लिंक्डइन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन यू गाइस कैन फॉलो हिम फ्रॉम देयर एंड कनेक्ट विद हिम फ्रॉम देयर सो या थैंक्स फॉर कमिंग Thank you.